Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Dapte from Pharma Growth Hub and today we are going to talk about why use Helic. Now Helic is a very interesting liquid chromatography. You must have heard about normal phase liquid chromatography, reverse phase liquid chromatography or even iron paired liquid chromatography. Now there is another type of liquid chromatography which is called as the hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography or in the short helic. Now this kind of liquid chromatography is also gaining a huge popularity. Now what is the reason that helic is also gaining a popularity in spite of having so many liquid chromatographies in the place and that is what we are going to discuss today. Let us first understand what is meant by helic. And helix stands for hydrophilic interaction liquid chromatography. Now the word itself has the hydrophilic term. That means what this helix kind of liquid chromatography has the hydrophilic stationary phase. And you must have heard that the normal phase liquid chromatography also has got the hydrophilic uh, stationary phase like diol or silica. So why there is a need of then another kind of uh, liquid chromatography like a helix. Now there is a very important catch and we will talk about that also. So helix is uh, used for separation of polar and hydrophilic compounds. Now as the helix has got the hydrophilic stationary phase and if you know the rule which is like attracts like, one can easily conclude that the polar or hydrophilic compounds can get strongly retained on the helix operations or the helic liquid chromatography and that is the primary reason why there is the existence of a helic. But another reason is very interesting and also equally important. Helic is a normal phase type separation means what helic uses the hydrophilic stationary phase and that's what this hydrophilic interaction comes into the place. But in addition to this hydrophilic uh, stationary phase, helic also uses the RP type eluent or mobile phase. The mobile phase used in the helic is just like the reverse phase type of mobile phases containing water plus ACN or buffer plus ACN. Now this mobile phases can be called as the organic aqueous. But if you look into the mobile phases used in the normal phase liquid chromatography. How they made? Now they don't have aqueous part most of the times. They generally have the less polar solvent like n hexane plus dichloromethane or chloroform plus n hexane. So they don't have the water into the mobile phase. So these stationary phases are called as the water immiscible stationary phases. How, sorry, the, these mobile phases are called as the water immiscible mobile phases. However, the mobile phases used in the helic, they are the water miscible. And that is the major difference between normal phase and what we call as the helic liquid chromatography. The next point is also very important and now it is related to the comparison in uh, reverse phase and the helic. So helic provides a roughly reversed elution order compared to RPLC or reverse phase liquid chromatography. Now this is quite obvious because reverse phase uses hydrophobic stationary phase whereas helic uses hydrophilic stationary phase. As the property of the stationary phase is completely different or reversed, the elution order for the compound will also get completely reversed. Let us look one example over here. See the, in the case of helic, if the elution order is like compound 1 followed by 2 and 3, you can expect the complete reversed elution order in case of the RPLC. That means compound 3 followed by 2 followed by 1. Let us now discuss about what are the different stationary phases available in the helic. The good news is now helic also provides a huge umbrella of the different bonded stationary phases. So you can select one appropriate bonded stationary phase for the helic and you will get the better separation for your hydrophilic or highly polar compound. The first kind of stationary phase is the neutron. 
so as the stationary phase is neutral there is no presence of any charged functional groups and hence there is no possibility of electrostatic interactions like hydrogen bonding or dipole dipole interaction so what are the examples of neutral stationary phases for helix diol phases or the amide phases falls under the neutral category the second type of helix stationary phase is the charged now this stationary phases has the charged bodies onto the stationary phase for example negative functional groups like sulfonate or positive functional groups like uh, quaternary ammonium so this negatively charged stationary phase can have the cation interaction or cation exchange and this positively charged stationary phase can bring the anion exchange process and so that way they can retain the charged bodies with much retention time so this stationary phases has the strong electrostatic interaction as there are charge present the electrostatic interaction is quite obvious what are the examples of uh, charged stationary phases like plain silica phases or amino propyl stationary phases are falls under the charged stationary phases the third kind of helix stationary phases containing both positive and negative charged and they are called as a zwitter ionic you can see in the diagram the last one now it has both positive charge and the negative charge the positive charge could be quaternary ammonium and the negative charge could be a sulfonate so as there are both the charges present on to the stationary phase now this both charges can be counter productive they are going to cancel out each other's effect and because of that the electrostatic interaction is going to get little weaken and sulfo betaen bonded stationary phase is the example of zwitter ionic helix stationary phase now as we understood what is meant by helix as we understood what are the different stationary phases available in the helix mode let us now discuss about why use helix what is the benefit of using the helix in in the rather than using you know rplc nplc ion chromatography or ion pair chromatography the first and foremost the polar and hydrophilic compounds are not retained in a simple fashion rplc so rplc is having the hydrophobic stationary phase and that is only suitable for the hydrophobic compounds or the non polar compounds but in case if you have the polar compounds like acids based you know this compounds will have the very little retention time for on the rplc in that case as we discussed earlier the helix is the preferred choice the ion pair chromatography ipc stand for ion pair chromatography means you can use the ion pairing reagent like uh, n hexane sulfonate or n heptane sulfonate salt and that actually makes your hydrophobic stationary phase little hydrophilic but in this process you know it takes a very longer time for equilibration and also ipc is said to be not much robust and also not much reproducible even though ipc can retain the polar compounds because now you are converting your hydrophobic stationary phase like c8 to hydrophilic stationary phase by using the hydrophilic ion pairing reagent like n hexane sulfonate having so3 minus negatively charged bodies but the problem with the ipc is what it takes a very longer time for column equilibration and also it is not reproducible so it may not be preferred much in that case you can think of using the helix liquid chromatography as we said earlier that the normal phase liquid chromatography can certainly retain the polar compounds for good amount of time but again the normal phase liquid chromatography uses the solvents which are not environment friendly like n hexane dichloromethane or chloroform and also the cost of this solvent is also quite high as compared to the aqueous organic phases in case of helix so here also helix wins over nplc helix is the best alternative to rplc ipc or even ion chromatography including nplc to analyze polar and hydrophilic compounds helix is superior in handling analyte solubility 
Now, what is the reason that the polar analytes may not be well dissolved into the normal phase liquid chromatography? Because normal phase liquid chromatography uses the hydrophobic or less polar mobile phase. So in case if a compound is highly polar, it may get precipitated out into the normal phase mobile phase. But what is the chances of this precipitation in helic? There is no chance because helic uses the polar component in the mobile phase such as water. So your polar compound can certainly get very much solubilized into the mobile phase of helic. Helic is also mass spectrometry friendly. If you use the volatile buffers like uh, formic acid, etc., it can be easily used in the for the MS uh, detection technique as well. A helix separation system is essentially instrumentally identical to RPLC system. Now, as the mobile phase composition is almost similar, right? Like organic plus aqueous in case of RPLC also. And in the helix also, we talked about organic plus aqueous mobile phase. So there is no as such difference in the mobile phase or element is concerned. And the stationary phases, you know, is only different, but that is not the component of your HPLC. The column is a different part and that is going to make the almost similar like RPLC operations. Helic has got various stationary phases with a high stability and reproducibility and that is the biggest advantage of now moving with the helix separation. And last but not the least, helix can be used with several detection techniques like UV, fluorescence, RI, ALST, CAD and mass spectrometry. I hope this many points can certainly convince you to use helix for your polar separation. Thank you so much.